member for Vancouver Point Grey. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. I've worked in the private sector and the public sector. I've been accountable for budgets and for making sure I had enough money at the end of the day to keep my employees working and to make sure that they were paid for their work. I'm a proud father and a proud husband. I'm an enthusiastic but not especially talented musician. Time with my wife and my son, our cozy home, and the knowledge that I worked hard and did my best along with a cold beer is my recipe for happiness. I love my family. I stand up for my community and I love this province. And that's why I have to say in light of this budget, enough is enough. I came from a big family, raised by my mom, a teacher, and my dad, a lawyer, a partner in a small community law firm of three lawyers. He wrote wills for seniors. He helped people who had been in car accidents. He donated his services to my elementary school silent auctions. I remember a client of his paying him with a jug of five kilogram jug of honey because he couldn't afford to pay for legal services but wanted to give something as thanks. It's the kind of community spirit I grew up with. So while dad was always responsible for making breakfast, he did his fair share of, home, of uh, housework, it was mom who ran the show at home. There were four EB kids to keep in line. Now there were a few cardinal rules at our house taught by mom's example and by her firm and consistent discipline. Hard work is the key to success. Play fair, don't cheat. If you can help someone in need, do it. Be true to yourself and your family, be an honorable member of your community, and be responsible for your actions. Everyone deserves a fair chance. Tell the truth. Every family member in this house shows up for dinner, and you go to church on Sunday so long as you're under a roof. Those values, taught to me by my parents, inform who I am today, and inform the values that my wife and I are trying to plant and grow in our young son. These values are exactly why I got into politics. And boy, are the lessons that British Columbians are learning today in BC a long way from the values I was taught with my brothers and sister around the EB dinner table in this budget. This government doesn't just ignore basic family values, it flaunts them with this budget. Work hard, you're foolish. Success comes to those who game the real estate market. They don't even have to pay taxes. This government won't do anything about it. Be an honorable member of your community and be responsible for your actions. We've got a government subject to two separate ongoing police investigations and an ombudsperson investigation into an RCMP investigation they just made up, hounding a man to suicide, Honorable Speaker. Their political organizers, their political organizers charged repeatedly with election act offenses. This budget, their political organizers charged repeatedly with election act offenses. This budget reflects that with more bottomless resources for the friends and insiders charged and being investigated with various, def various offenses and that are currently under investigation. Of course, the government won't release their names, Honourable Speaker, but the public will pay for this the exact same way. It's funny how little has changed since the Premier was stripped of her presidency at SFU oh so many years ago for not following the rules. I guess there wasn't an indemnity fund then, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> Be honest. This government believes British Columbians aren't paying attention to what they're doing. Be honest. This government believes British Columbians aren't paying attention to what they're doing, just what they're saying. Just tell them there'll be a trillion dollars from LNG and we'll get rid of the PST. Doesn't matter whether it's possible. Who cares if it happens or if it was even possible in the first place? Raise taxes and say you're not. Tell people that the folks in BC ain't never had it so good. Spend more on liquor store renovations than affordable housing renovations and still insist you have the best affordable housing program in North America. Historic. Let the public try to figure out why tent cities keep showing up in their communities across the province. It must be somebody else's fault. Tell them you'll eliminate the debt and then rack up more debt faster than any government in BC history. Have the ninth lowest wage growth and the sixth lowest private sector job creation in Canada and tell people the economy is the best in the nation. 
These are the people who run our province, Honourable Speaker, who designed this budget. The family values of hard work, of integrity, of responsibility, of community spirit lost on them. They say one thing while they're doing the complete opposite. Election Act offences, multiple police investigations, perjury among political staff. RCMP investigations made up for political advantage, Honourable Speaker, destroying hardworking researchers' careers. It's endless. And this budget with money for the lawyers to defend that kind of conduct. The government turns the other way and holds out a hand for political donations while we watch our resources walk out the door without a fair return to our communities. Handing us $2 for a million litres of our water. Fishing our salmon, cutting our trees, and then closing our mills and canneries to save a few bucks on wages by processing them overseas. Shipping raw logs overseas while pulp mills right next door, desperate for fibre. Fairness is for suckers, and don't forget to make your donation. And worse than their cut corners, they're selling out of our communities while people watch family members tossed out of work is their remarkable incompetence. People don't ask much from government. Public safety, clean environment, a fair wage for a day's work, a chance to raise a family, a chance to have fun, to celebrate, reliable information about how things are going and what the government has planned. Basic. What do we get instead? Government slashing half a billion dollars off their own projections for public revenue from our natural resource in these budget documents. Projections made, projections made just 12 months ago, Honourable Speaker, adding $700 million to projected public debt, a projection made just 12 months ago. How can this government be so dramatically wrong about things that matter to British Columbians so much? A government that can mismanage things so badly that they raise ICBC rates, yet turn a monopoly Crown Corporation insurance company into a net cost for the province. If you can turn a monopoly business that sells a product that people literally have to buy into a money loser and pat yourself on the back and call yourself a good manager, you've got a bright future as a BC Liberal under this budget. Boasts that the government has improved public safety in the budget speech from the finance minister, Honourable Speaker, came at the exact same time there was an active hostage taking at a bank in Surrey, a community that saw almost 60 shot fired incidents last year. Two Surrey schools hit by bullets in the last five months. Two men shot last weekend. A community still waiting for the promised increases in police presence. It's the departure from basic family values of hard work, fairness, integrity, standing up for family, community spirit, and personal responsibility that are moving us in the wrong direction. If our government believed in defending our families and communities, you wouldn't hear them celebrating the direction our economy is headed in. Instead, they'd be in the small communities of BC with major, major economic initiatives to make up for the massive mine, mill, and resource job losses mounting across the province. They'd be supporting people looking at losing their homes after losing their jobs, however they could, until resource prices come back up. Let me make a list of just some of the mines and mills closed over the last 18 months. Closures decimating the economic base of rural BC. The Salmon Cannery and Prince Rupert, all five tech steel-making coal mines, including both steel-making coal mines in Tumbler Ridge. The Canal Flats Sawmill, the Houston Forest Products Sawmill, the Elk Falls Paper Mill, the Howe Sound Newsprint Mill, the Chetwin Mechanical Pulp Mill, and the partial closure of the Howe Sound Pulp and Paper Corporation. Huckleberry, thank the member. It's a joke to some of these members, Honourable Speaker, but these are real jobs and real families. Thousands of family members dependent on the jobs represented by these facilities that have closed. Thousands of family members now desperate. Businesses that serve the workers of these facilities in small towns now desperate. If they watched the budget speak, they would, they would have heard the finance minister say, people ask him, how has he managed such success? My goodness, if this is what success looks like, we're in real trouble. 
This government's budgets are so far from family values. If our government believed in hard work and fairness, they'd make everybody pay the property transfer tax the same way. Another missed opportunity in this budget. Now, Honourable Speaker, it's been about a month since we learned about shadow flipping in Metro Vancouver, a practice where a family sells a home with a long closing period, and realtors or speculators flip that home once, twice, or three more times before the final closing date, making commissions or price increases each time. Often this is done with the complicity of a rogue realtor who lied to the homeowner about the value of their home exactly so that he or she could flip, flip, flip and enjoy greater commissions and profits each time. This is an empty economic activity that contributes literally nothing to our economy but higher house prices driven by endless speculation. It hurts families that want to buy a home but can't compete. You would think that this government, that the Premier or the Finance Minister, learning that this was taking place, would at a minimum immediately ensure there was an independent investigation into this practice to stop the deceit, strip the licenses of those engaged in this disgraceful practice, and make an effort to enforce the property transfer tax at each and every flip. You would think they would shut down the greedy, grasping speculators engaging in shadow flipping. That those shadow flippers, if nothing else, would have to pay the same tax that everybody else has to pay. Instead, the finance minister announced in his budget that he's you know, study the problem. While he studies, the tax-free flipping continues, driving prices higher and higher, flip, 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 flip. How much money from the property transfer tax are we giving away to these speculators? Tens of millions? Hundreds of millions? My guess is that we're leaving an amount in the nine figures. Hundreds of millions of dollars. So it's just a guess because this government introduced not a single measure in this budget to even track the number of flips between sale and closing that take place. Not even a single measure to track. How do you study a problem if you don't know how widespread it is? This government's willful blindness on the antics in the property market are hurting businesses in Metro Vancouver as well. These businesses paying their taxes, hiring people at good wages, have told this government explicitly that they are having trouble competing for employees with companies in Seattle, in Portland, in Toronto, in Montreal, where the cost of housing is lower and people can enjoy a higher standard of life in the same job. The trouble is making it difficult for them to recruit and retain employees. So on one hand, Honourable Speaker, you have greedy, grasping speculators, deceiving homeowners about the value of their homes, profiting from their insider market knowledge, engaging in a practice that drives up prices for everyone else. The government refuses to even track what they're doing, let alone tax it or ban it. The Premier and the Finance Minister, with their hands-off approach, are sending a message to these shadow flippers. Go for it. On the other hand, you have a business. For one example, Hootsuite, employing hundreds of people in Metro Vancouver at high wages, employees who support local businesses, who pay income taxes, who contribute in so many ways to our community, people who, if they leave the company and can afford to, will start up their own business in a high-tech startup cluster in Metro Vancouver. You have the CEO of Hootsuite writing to the government an open letter asking for help. I can't grow my business the way that I'd like to because of high housing prices. They're stifling my ability to recruit and retain employees. Between these two groups, it says a great deal about the values of this government, who they've prioritized in this budget, and how they've reacted to these two separate events. The message to speculators and their empty economic profiteering, go for it. The message to the CEO of Hootsuite, literally, and you cannot make this up, the solution presented by the member for Chilliwack Hope was that the market will solve this problem Hootsuite and companies like them should leave Metro Vancouver and go to a lower cost jurisdiction. And that solution, Honourable Speaker, was roundly applauded by the same government MLAs that voted and will vote and applauded for this budget that refused to tax the shadow flippers. No help for you, Hootsuite. Your hard work, paying taxes, building a business, employing people, 
Creating a tech cluster in Metro Vancouver is meaningless to us. Go move somewhere else. You should be, and I'm using the member's words, quote, punished for daring to locate your business in Metro Vancouver. Shadow flippers, your empty economic activity, driving up prices for families, not paying the same tax everyone else does, deceiving homeowners, we're hands off. Go for it. Have a great time. This is the kind of economy we want to build, an economic ghost town of absentee speculators and investors. This budget is not the response of a government that values hard work, that values integrity, that values standing up for family and community. This budget is the response of a government that values something else entirely. Honourable Speaker, our low Canadian dollar has been a windfall for international property billionaires snapping up commercial properties in our province. A German billionaire bought the Royal Centre in downtown Vancouver for a cool $400 million. A Chinese consortium just bought a majority share not one, not two, not three, but all four Bentall Towers in, ben in downtown Vancouver. Estimates for how much they paid range as high as $1 billion. The property transfer tax for just these two deals, Honourable Speaker, which both closed in the last two months, would be over $20 million in revenue for the province to spend on critical programs like housing affordability, health care, education, and other essential services. I say that the tax would be over $20 million, but likely it will never be paid. Strange, isn't it? If the government valued fairness, you would expect it wouldn't matter whether you're a German billionaire or a family of four in Maple Ridge. Everyone pays the property transfer tax the same way. But the government knows this isn't happening. And the finance minister, again, says he's studying the problem that's been around for more than a decade. Billionaires buying property hire lawyers to exploit a loophole called a bear trust that helps them avoid paying the tax. Our family in Maple Ridge will pay the tax when they buy what they can afford in the resale housing market. They won't hire a lawyer to design a bear trust for them. Here again, we see the values of this government that doesn't reflect any of the values I was raised with. If you're rich and you can afford to hire a lawyer to exploit a tax loophole, eh, you don't have to pay the tax. If you go to your job through traffic every day, if you pay your income taxes, if you volunteer on your PTA, if you coach your kid's soccer team, if you're a contributing member of our community that actually somehow has the means to buy a home in this real, in this real estate market, well, you pay the tax. I have no idea why the finance minister and the premier did not close these loopholes. If this government cared about the values held dear by BC families, they taxed international investors using Metro Vancouver homes as a stock or bond in their portfolio while giving nothing back to our community except higher prices. That's fair. That's basic. Honourable Speaker, this government's values in this budget have nothing to do with the values of BC families. If our government believed in being responsible for your actions, they would admit that the Premier wildly and irresponsibly overpromised what was possible with LNG in our, prom our province. Her LNG fantasy was just that, and always that, fantasy. Not only have they not delivered the one LNG promise plant they promised they'd deliver by 2015, but they, among other failures, failed to win the support of First Nations who voted against a major proposal that they reasonably believe will hurt the salmon run in their community. So of course there's no LNG, there's no money to put into the Premier's promised prosperity fund. I think every family understands that people make mistakes. But being a responsible member of the community means accepting responsibility for those mistakes. But instead of accepting responsibility for the broken trillion dollar prosperity fund promise, the end of the PST, the Premier denies she ever said such a thing. There is a prosperity fund in the budget, she says. It just happens to come not from resource royalties, but from a tax hike in the medical services plan premium for thousands and thousands of families and people across BC. Here again, we see the government's values on full display. People who work hard, pay their taxes, keep their promises. They have to pay more now to cover for someone who made promises she couldn't keep. To help our Premier in a desperate bid to save face with her fantasy fund that has absolutely nothing to do with LNG royalties and everything to do with the increase in the MSP. 
Making someone else pay for your mistake isn't the same as accepting responsibility for your actions and empty promises. It's the exact opposite. Families know that, and you wouldn't have gotten away with that in the Evie House. Shirking responsibility, rewarding those who don't work hard and exploit loopholes at the expense of those who do work hard and pay their taxes, not standing up for family members in distress when they need you because the Rupert Cannery or the Chetwin Mechanical Pulp Mill is closed and they've lost their job. Not standing up for communities like Osoyos in distress when they need you because the community school that you're closing isn't just a school, it's also a meeting center, a community center, an employer. This government's values, are, as reflected in this budget, are not the values of British Columbia families, Honourable Speaker, although they insist the opposite. And British Columbians were absolutely right to read this budget and immediately realize that it reflects that this government, this Premier, lost the path a while ago and are now completely out of touch with what's important to everyone in this province. Thank you, Honourable Speaker.